Hi everybody, Lydia here with the Build Show Network and today we're going to be talking all about drywall compounds, what to use when, and kind of the order in which you should use them. So first off, we're going to be looking at our taping muds. And when I say taping muds, these are muds that can be used to apply tape. Not all muds should be used to apply tape because some of them don't have the right attributes. There's topping muds that should only be used for topping. So when we're looking at taping, there's a couple different options and you want to use these with either a paper tape or you can use them with fiber fuse, but none of these should be used with mesh tape at all. So first off is all purpose light. It's exactly how it sounds. It's an all purpose light. And something to keep in mind when you are at the store and you're looking at buying these, there's instructions right here on the front that tell you kind of the, the specialties of this mud. So like this one has versatile for all drywall finishing steps, up to 30% less weight, um, and it's easier to apply and sand. So this compared to the all-purpose, it's just a lighter version of the all-purpose with the same properties. Ultra lightweight, also called ULAP, is an ultra lightweight version of all purpose. It has improved slip, it has improved workability. It's also a little bit lighter. This one's 40% lighter, this one's 30% lighter. Now the absolute lightest for taping is taping light. And taping light should only be used for taping. You don't wanna be using this anywhere else. It has, a, it shrinks a lot. So it's, it's real fluffy, it's really nice to tape with, it has a ton of glue in it, it's really slippery but it does shrink. So if you're doing screws, any kind of coat work with that, it, you're not gonna be happy with it because of the way this mud is designed to perform. So this one is 45% less weight. So we've got 30, 40, and 45. So these ones are all that much lighter than the OG, the all-purpose. So all-purpose is probably one of our go-tos. Um, we always have very consistent results with it. It's really nice in the winter because we know it's gonna dry. It sinks the tape down and all of these muds are formulated to kind of pull your tape down and in and to shrink when they dry compared to some of the finishing muds that are supposed to have less shrinkage. So all purpose, exactly what it sounds, is all purpose. We choose to just use it for taping. It can shrink back pretty good on your screws. So you need to be careful if you are using that. Um, it dries really hard. That's the only thing about AP is um, if you are leaving goobers on your wall or you're a little bit messier of a taper or you're just kind of learning, AP might not be the best pick for you because if you have stuff on the wall, it's going to be really hard to scrape off and it's very hard to sand. Taping light is definitely easier to sand. It's a softer mud. Ultra lightweight is a great mud too. It's formulated to be hard but easy to sand. So it's kind of like these two had a baby and, and you've got this one. And then the all-purpose light, we actually use this for texturing too. So it's kind of a great, just kind of all-purpose mud. It also is easy to sand and um, says less shrinkage. So we usually use it for texture because it does hold a texture very nicely and it's really easy and creamy to work with. So these are the only ones that we should be taping with and using either paper tape or fiber fuse with these compounds. Now we're on to our finishing, our, our topping, our coating muds. So we added in plus three. Plus three is my favorite to coat with. It always turns out really nice. They say you can do all of the finishing steps with it. I don't tape with it. I don't like to tape with it. So this is only a coating mud for us. So we do screws, flats, butts, angles, and corner beads. So this is our go-to. It's what we're, after all the tape's on, this is what we're then covering the tape and then coating with. You can also use this for level fiving. It's just a kind of a really great all-purpose finishing mud. Topping is exactly as it sounds, topping. So you'll be using this for only your top coats. This is not recommended for using on metal corner bead for your first coat. It doesn't have like kind of the gluey and the sticky so it won't stick as well. So if you're first coating on metal, plus three, all-purpose, ultra lightweight, uh, even hot mud or AP is gonna be a better choice. Topping should only be used like it says on the box for topping. So this one is for fill and finish coats and drywall joint finishing up to 30% less weight. So this one is 25% less weight and this one's 30%, this one's 30 and then this one's 40. So as you can see, there's a little bit of variety here. If you're just doing a smaller job, it's probably not gonna be worth it for you to start getting into all these different muds, especially with a, a small percentage of lighter weight. These really are there for those of us that are doing this every single day. So if you're going to have to go with kind of just a good mud 
to do all your coat work with, I would recommend plus three. And then taping, you can use the ultra lightweight, you can use all-purpose light, or just the regular all-purpose or the taping. But these ones should be used for coating. Um, ultra lightweight, I've been coating with this for a little bit. It's really nice, thins down nicely, whips up well. It's got a good slip to it, which is important when you're coating. And then the all-purpose light is great too. It usually has a little bit of an orange tint to it, as does the ultra lightweight. So if you are buying mud and it's not coming pure white, it's totally fine. That's absolutely okay. Some muds just come tinted and also some stores will also tint their mud. Something important to look at when you are buying mud is there is a manufacturer date stamped on all of these boxes and also on the tubs if you choose to buy the buckets. So this was manufactured 6-1-2022. This one was 1-21-2022. And then the topping down there was also 6-1-2022. So be careful when you're purchasing. These muds do have shelf lives because they are made of organic materials. So everything in here is just kind of will eventually go rotten or go bad. So try and get something that's manufactured at least within the last year. Don't go and, and pick up a box of mud that's three years old. It's just not going to work out well for you. And also you, you, the stores should be rotating through these pretty frequently, moving the old products to the front and the new products in the back. So you can always ask your manager for the freshest batch of mud that's come in because it will make a difference with how these muds are, are whipping up and the consistencies. So now we're going to talk about texturing muds and uh, what to use for that. So when we're looking at texturing, there are a couple different muds that we kind of will go to. All-purpose light is fantastic for hand textures. It does turn out really nice, lays down smooth, has a little like, it just kind of is, is a great mud to texture with because it is so creamy and so nice to coat with. Ultra lightweight, you can also do textures with. It does finish a little bit harder, but it's also easy to sand. The nice thing about the AP light is it's really easy to sand if you're doing a hand texture. It's really easy to get any lap lines out or marks that you might not like. Um, same thing with the ultra lightweight plus three, you can absolutely texture with this. It's a little bit softer. It doesn't hold the texture as well as some of the other muds do. So if you're really wanting a little bit more of an aggressive texture, I would go with the all purpose light. And then the Mac Daddy of them all is Fastex. This is what you would spray orange peel with. Do not spray orange peel with any of these. You're not going to be getting that hold and that stick that you're looking for with that splatter pattern. So Fastex is a wall and ceiling spray texture and it is heavy. This is a very dense mud and being so dense means that it holds textures very well. So if we're spraying orange peel, we're going with Fastex. We also use it for our swirl texture. It does dry pretty hard and it does hold textures and kind of those forms really well. Um, you can do it by hand, you can spray it, you can run it through a, um, a Titan Speed Flow, a Graco Mark V. You can do hopper with it. You can kind of just do any kind of texturing with this mud. So if you're trying to match into an orange peel or something existing like that, go with Fast Text. It's going to give you a better look. Now, Fast Text should not be used for, for taping, topping, or coating. It's just not made for that period. It's made to only texture. So if you're looking at buying, you know, you have some texture that you need to, to tie back into. If it's a hand texture, you're going to do all-purpose light, plus three, or ultra lightweight. If it's a spray texture, you're going to want to go with this Fast Text right here. Um, this one, sometimes with the textures, some of the orange peels can be pretty thin. So you might, you definitely need to thin this down. It's really like a big brick of mud. So definitely add some water to it and get it to your consistency for whatever it is you're doing. So last but not least is hot mud, easy sand, silver set, whatever is available in your area. This is a powdered mud and it has set times. So you have 40 minutes of working time with this one and you've got 90 minutes working time with this. So it does come in these little pouches, which is great or you can buy the big bags depending on what you want. Now, this should not go any further than your topping. If you are um, skimming, texturing, and taking it any further than that, it's just not gonna work. It's not what it's designed for. This is made for pre-filling, patching holes. Uh, you can tape with paper or mesh. Mesh only with these muds. So if you grab mesh tape and you use it with an all-purpose, it's absolutely gonna fail. So mesh tape only with a hot mud, easy sand, silver set genre. Um, we use this for our pre-filling when we get on a job. So we pre-fill our butts, large holes, and then we'll use it also for patches. So anything that's blown out, like a blown out box, we'll go ahead and throw some of that in there. Uh, these cannot be run through automatic tools. 
I mean, you could, there's some boxes that are made specially for it, but you don't want to be mixing up a bunch of this and running it through a tube or even mixing up a, a big, like, whole bag of it because after 40 minutes, that's going to set, and then you're going to be stuck with a um, bucket full of set mud that you have nothing to do with. This stuff sets hard. It sets very hard, and it really doesn't shrink, and that's why it's great for doing patches, filling holes, and then also for pre-fill, and then... The um, mesh tape is sticky, so you can put your mesh tape on and then run your hot mud over that. But it's really, really should not go any further than just doing patches, pre-fill, and then if you have a job that you have to get done in a day, you can tape it and top with it, but no skim coating, it won't paint well, and it doesn't finish the same. It's not as smooth, it's kind of a chunky. Uh, it's hard to get it to that same consistency as the other muds that we've looked at before. So that's it for me today. I hope that helps when you're looking at picking a mud, when you're, just, when you're standing in builder's first source and you're like, oh man, what do I pick here? What do I need for my project? A really good rule of thumb is you can always get AP and plus three and do almost everything with that. Those are two staple muds. And then you can start getting into the lighter ones when you've got some really intensive overhead work or you're doing this as a profession or you've got a lot of drywall work lined up. Uh, these guys, should not go any further than topping and they're really good for patches and using filling holes and things like that but they, you really can't do anything above that with those so keep that in mind when you are buying these sometimes a little bag is a lot better than getting a big bag if you're not going to go through a ton of it and anyway that's it i hope you guys learned something today and i will catch you next week on the build show